Okay, so I'm recording. Are you recording? Yes, yes, I am, good sir. I am recording with my voice and my stuff and things. Awesome. So, <laughs> wha- why do crabs never give to charity? Why is that? Because they're shellfish. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, every week I think that it cannot get any worse (laughs) but yet it does but yet it does I think I gotta I think I gotta stop uh, gotta stop dreaming for a day where there are no bad jokes from you yes (laughs) I'm serious man what I'm serious (laughs) <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Appenroy Talks About Wrestling. I am your host, I am Rue, and with me as always is my good friend. Oh, this is Archie. I am excited to do another podcast now that that bad joke is out of the way. Let's get <laughs> rolling, shall we? All right. Well, <laughs> got some big news uh, this past week. Um... A gentleman who wrestled in the WWE for the past four years? No, three years. I don't know. He's wrestled here for a while, wrestled in the WWE for a while, and he was fired. And his he name is... Al- really, he wasn't fired. He was, he was fired! <laughs> <laughs> Alberto Del Rio, who I've been kind of like really high on ever since he came into the company, was fired was just a couple days ago now. Yeah, it had to have been just a few days ago. I think it was two two days ago that he yeah. was that he was released. So yeah, yeah. yeah was apparently, that he slapped an employee during an altercation, and uh, uh, they 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 fired him. And um, um, some reports came out. I think it was yesterday on Saturday that uh, uh, a name was tied to the event that happened. It turns out that there was an issue with a racist comment that was made towards Alberto, and uh, he got in the guy's face and slapped him. Yep, uh, that is basically what I've you know heard too. Obviously, you know we weren't there, so all we have to go go on is like uh, like the reports you know from like the internet, and apparently it was it was picked up by some you know a couple of news stations or something, I guess too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know. I don't care who you are, you know, whether it was a racist remark or not that was made towards, you know, Del Rio, you know, that's still a time where you have to keep your cool, you know, and even though you're, you're, even though you're not like a top star right now, you know, you want to always try to stay in good favor, you know, in good, you know, in, in good light with, you know, the higher ups and everything, so... I, I never am one to promote like any type of violence or anything like that. So I mean, I don't know. It's just it's it's too bad. It really is. It, it is too bad. I uh, you know, and I've actually no- I noticed uh, after that news came out that like Twitter blew up and the name of the oh, guy yeah. that was released uh, his name is Cody Balieri. Apparently, he's the social social media manager for WWE, and they'd like. They were attacking him. They were like people on Twitter were attacking WWE, saying, "Oh, it's okay to make a racist remark because apparently a guy standing up for himself uh, is uh, not good enough or not and not preferred in WWE." And you know, and don't get me wrong, you know, I'm Filipino. You know, I don't really take too kindly to racist remarks, and I'm not coming into defense of Cody, but you know, I gotta say, people on Twitter, relax. You weren't there. You don't yeah. know the situation. Uh, you're hearing it basically, but for all we know, you're hearing it in the fourth degree. Like someone told somebody, somebody told somebody, somebody told somebody, and then Dave Meltzer reported on it. We don't know the situation. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and Dave Meltzer, his reporting is a little iffy sometimes. Anyway, right? I mean, exactly. Honestly, some of the stuff that I've that I've read of his, you're just like, it never. Some of it has never ever come been true or come to light or anything like that. But but you're right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's. It's coming from somebody that came from somebody that came from somebody that came from somebody, you know, it's so nobody, you know, obviously we, we weren't there. The people that are on Twitter weren't there. We don't know what happens. You know, Mm -hmm. all we know is somebody got slapped. 
probably over a racist remark that was made towards Del Rio. Um, it might like not said, have been like about said, that. You know, it might yeah, not even have been about a racist remark. It could have been something else. We don't know. So we don't know. And it, it's too bad that Del Rio was fired. Um, I mean, it really is. But I mean, I know that you were very, very high on him since he came in. You know, to the WWE, mm-hmm. you really, really liked him. I I liked his wrestling. I liked his you know I liked his style of wrestling. I I was a big fan of that. I was never a big fan of his character, just because like I've I've told you before, I felt like you know that kind of character has been overdone, you know, and, but, you know, I just felt like he never really got, got over with the crowd, really, whether it was a face or a heel. I mean, I always felt like he was kind of on the cusp, yeah. you know, but never really, really got over, over. And, uh, and I just felt like he just didn't have that, that tangible, you know, that, that one intangible or whatever that, that could push him over the edge. And, uh, I mean, it's too bad because I feel like, you know, it's just kind of like they lost a good talent. Yes. Uh, but, you know, if it was if it was Del Rio's fault, then, you know, he should man up and say it was his fault, you know, or I don't mm-hmm. know. It's just it's just too bad that a good talent was lost. Yeah, he has been very reliable, very reliable in terms of getting a good match almost out of anybody. And that's really hard when, especially these days, when there's so many different kinds of talent and so many different kinds of styles. Right. And for some reason, he was the guy that could make it happen with almost anyone. That, goes, that includes the Big Show. Uh, that includes uh, Dolph Ziggler. You know, he had some pretty spectacular matches. And, then there's, and with him, I mean, there's a huge level of uh, legitimacy to him being a wrestler and being in the WWE. He's the nephew yeah. of, of Mil Mascaris in uh in uh, uh mexico so there's a huge like legacy he's a part of and i really felt that in terms of his wrestling style in terms of his work in the ring he really lived up to the name that he's associated with and yeah whether or not being over with the fans he was really awkward as a face in my opinion um, yeah, i mean he was yeah he was real awkward uh, you know and that, that's why i said he was never really over as a face or a heel mm-hmm. you know that's um i mean but I mean, this is the timing of this all is kind of has me a little. I don't know. It's the timing of it all is just weird because Del Rio has always said that at the end of his contract he wants to go back to Mexico and wrestle in Mexico. Like yeah. he wasn't planning on resigning anyway. Um, and I think that his contract was up fairly soon. Yes. Um, so I just think the whole timing of this is just kind of weird. Uh, maybe it's just me, you know, maybe it's just one of those things, you know, maybe it's just a coincidence, but I don't know. I just think, uh, from him saying, you know, Hey, I'm going to go back to Mexico. I think he was relocating to Texas anyway. I think he moved to Texas or, or, or was planning on it. And, uh, and, and just then all, then all of a sudden this happens, you know, at, when, after he said that he wants to go back to Mexico and then he's not going to, you know, do another deal. I don't know. It could be coincidence, but I just, I just think it's kind of weird. It, it, it is kind of strange. I mean, it's it's kind of suspect. Sometimes when uh, people make it known that they have no interest in re-signing or they have an interest of maybe taking a break, these things do happen. You know, I mean, it wasn't long ago where CM Punk stated, well, probably at the end of my contract, I'm not going to come back. And then he just leaves WWE. And it's just like, that's kind of suspect because he had less than a year left on his contract. And then mm-hmm. he just takes off kind of a thing. And I don't know. I'm not saying that he... I'm not saying that was a similar situation to Del Rio, but it does happen. And um, um, I don't know, it's just, I'm, I guess for the most part I'm disappointed. And it kind of gave me a chuckle when I heard that TNA was looking to make him an offer. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I laughed really hard at that one because I'm thinking, sure, do that. You, know? <laughs> you may not be on TV, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would. I don't. Th- I mean, I could be wrong here, but even if they did o- offer him a some sort of deal, TNA, that is, um, I really don't think that. I don't think they would take it. I mean, he wanted. He's already stated he wanted to go back to Mexico and anyway and go back home. I would assume. Yeah. Um So I, I highly doubt. Hey, let's go to. I mean, it could. I mean, it may not be about money anyway. I mean, so I mean. 
let's say he did go to TNA, you know, obviously he wouldn't be getting paid as much, you know, um, he wouldn't be, he wouldn't be seen except for local crowds. Um, I mean, so, I mean, they're really, I don't see a, uh, I really don't see a, I don't think, feel like it's a win-win for him. I think it's just a lose-lose if he, if he took one, you know, he'd be getting less money and less people would be watching him wrestle. Yeah. You know, so, I don't know, I just feel like, uh, I just feel like if, if an offer was made to him that, you know, if I was Del Rio, um, it would just, it didn't seem like it would be a good fit. That's just me. No, I mean, <laughs> we, we talked about this before, TNA is definitely on the downswing. They're losing their contract with Spike mm-hmm. TV unless they can find any kind of distribution somewhere else. But, you know, it's just, yeah. if he's interested in going back to Mexico, I mean, he's already a big star in Mexico. He was a big star prior to being a full-time pro wrestler. You know, he was actually a mixed martial artist for a little while. Uh-huh. He was, you know, I mean, he, he I don't think he's hurting for money. You know, I mean... He, oh, no, I don't uh, think he is at all. You know, and, and in all honesty, I mean, I'm sure AAA and... In uh, uh, Mexico, would take him in a heartbeat, considering who he is and who he's connected to. I mean, Mil Mascaris is the Hulk Hogan of Mexico. You mm-hmm. know, just uh, the guy's. I think he's in the seventies, and he still performs every now and then. I mean, that, that guy's yeah. a legend. And I mean, you know, yeah, I just there, there. I if he's going back to Mexico, good for him. I think bad for us. You know, for, as the American fans, because it's really, really, really difficult to make your name especially if you have a style that's similar to somebody else's del rio yeah, had I'm... everything he was he was a mexican wrestler he was a tall guy he had a very good scientific style mixed in with luchador moves which is very rare and he worked with almost everybody and it's just it to me it's more of a loss as a fan I don't know how much right. of a loss it is for WWE because I he wasn't a draw. Let's make that very you know let's make that yeah, fairly obvious. He, really just, he wasn't, wasn't a, a draw. draw, but he was such a good worker, and I'm very disappointed. But you know, as is anything, is you know, he's another spoke on the wheel, and the wheel's going to keep on turning without him. You know, they're going to yep. replace him with somebody else. Yep, I mean that's true. And uh, well, I kind of got something the. Uh, that I that I kind of wanted to bring up to you this week, uh, sure. For this podcast, did you see? Uh, of course you did, because I, I sent it to you. Um, the the new the finally revealed a few screenshots of WWE Two K Fifteen. Yes, and they look fantastic. I don't know if you they, saw the one mm-hmm. that they they released a two of Randy Orton. Yes, I did. Did you see yes, those two? Oh, yes. How? <laughs> I mean, we obviously we're going to get the best looking WWE game that we've ever seen, you mm-hmm. know, and and I'm really really hoping that that transitions into gameplay as well. Uh, but I was just I was blown away by those shots of John Cena and that one of John Cena and, and the two of uh, Randy Orton. They were just so much detail, uh, just within those few screenshots. Just has me so flipping excited and i think tomorrow we are going to be getting some more news um and some more little tidbits uh of the game which i'm really excited about so but uh, what did you think of the screenshots the screenshots were amazing and that's something they've been promising for a long time you know uh it's going to be more detailed you know they really took a lot of fan suggestions about what they'd rather see and just seeing the shots of John Cena with the uh, the grimace on his face like he's taking a dump, you know, <laughs> with, sure. along with the veins on his arms and his chest and everything, and then seeing the shot of Randy Orton with his arms up and just the detail on his tattoos and uh, even his hairline, you know, just, I was, I was quite blown away by what I saw, and I'm really excited. I haven't owned a wrestling game in a very long time, and... Uh, you know, this may be the first one I've owned since uh, WWE 13, I think. So, so yeah, so that you you haven't owned one in a couple years then. Two, three years, yeah. And before yeah, then, you... I, I I didn't own a wrestling game since uh, uh, Raw versus SmackDown, I think. So, it's been a while. It's been a minute, yeah. you know. Yeah, you know. I mean, because I remember you. I, I just want to see what all they that they're going to do with this game because 
obviously we know that it's going to look freaking amazing now, you know, now that they've released a few shots. Um, yeah. But at the same time, you know, I'm excited to see what they're going to do with, you know, game. I mean, this is 2K's first, you know, real first go at it where we're, we're going to see their stamp put on, uh, put on this game. You know, last year, you mm-hmm. know, um, Ukes and, uh, and THQ, they still kind of had, they, it was pretty much still their game. You know, 2K just put their stamp on it. That's all they did. They just said, hey, this is a, and it was even after, uh, no, no. I'm thinking, of, yeah, yeah, okay, last year was, was 2K's first real go into the game. And they, they, they put yes. their, they put the, they had 2K on the box, but it was really Ukes and still THQ's show. It was still their game, it was still their baby. Uh, but now this year, I mean, with the help of Ukes now, THQ is no more. But even though they still have they still have Ukes in there, uh, you know, doing doing uh, their thing with the game, this is finally 2K's chance to shine to see what they are going to do with the game. We already know that they have um, they have uh, two uh, was it two uh, like rivalry modes I think where they're where we're gonna see two separate uh, storylines as far as rivalries go. I don't I don't know if they're gonna be original. Or if they're going to be something that uh, rivalries, if they're going to take rivalries from uh, WWE's past, um, which which could be a really which could be really cool if we rel- relived some of that stuff. Uh, but they're also mm-hmm. finally they're finally doing like how they did with uh, like the baseball and with uh, and especially with uh, like a uh, the basketball franchise. They're finally doing like a my player sort of thing. So they're doing like a career. Uh, with your created uh, wrestler, and there's going to be a mode for that. I we don't. Yeah. There's going to be storyline in a mode. I don't know exactly. They haven't had any details for it yet, but uh, I'm I'm just so excited to see what they're going to do with it. Um, mm-hmm. What do you think? First, Rue, let me get your take on like some of the rivalry modes. Do you hope? Do you hope that it's going to be something that's uh, uh, that's new, something that's original, or are you hoping to maybe relive, relive a couple rivalries? Well, there's some great rivalries I can think of right now that I would like to actually act out in video game form. You know, I mean, one that's actually going on right now is John Cena and and uh, um, and uh, Brock Lesnar. You know, that's a rivalry mm-hmm. in and of itself, and a long storied rivalry between the two of them. So, I mean, yeah. it'd be really cool to actually play it out and play it out how you would want to see it happen. You know, and uh, so I'm I'm just I'm really excited to see what they could do, but. Yeah, just like the lack of details is is the thing that's actually keeping us on the edge of our seats. Like, what is it going to be? What is it going to do? Kind of a thing. And right. our, our version of rivalry mode in the past has been like reliving the road to WrestleMania for certain wrestlers or something, you know. And um, it'd just be really cool to see how it all plays out. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited about it. Um, I don't. I don't. What I think is there is going to happen is I don't think that they're going to be original rivalries because what's the point of having a rivalry mode uh, with two storylines, you know, if if you're not going to relive some of the greatest rivalries of all time? I mean, yeah. think about it. Um, they have. I'm really. I'm hoping. Dear Lord, I'm hoping this would be this would be really cool. I would love to relive uh, if they could. Um, like kind of like the uh, the NWO versus like the WCW days. I mean, that would be really cool. That'd be very interesting to to kind of go back because no game has really done that. I mean, they've no. done the rivalries. I mean, think about like WWE uh, like thirteen and two uh, K fourteen and thirteen. You had the Attitude Era where we pretty much relived the whole Attitude Era and all the rivalries that went along with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and in two K fourteen, it was the you know, it was, I mean, it was WrestleMania mode. It was pretty much the 30 years of WrestleMania uh, mode. But, I mean, you got to relive a lot of the, the greatest matches. So, I mean, we've gone through that. We've gone through that. We've gone through uh, the Attitude Era. Um, we've kind of soaked up a lot of the history of WWE already in the game. Mm-hmm. So, since WWE owns the rights to WCW and all that content anyway, why not go back through and see... You know, and and have like the like the WCW, you know, and NWO rivalry, and you know, because that was a huge part of history, and uh, I would love to see that. 
And uh, as okay. far as like the created wrestler stuff, um, story mode goes, uh, I'm just excited to see what they come up with. That you know, that's I'm I'm hoping that you can start off in like NXT or something, um, and and work your way up. That to me, that would be that would be amazing to have like a like a tryout match for NXT and then working your way up the NXT ladder and then getting the call up, you know, for you know for the main stage. That's what I'm hoping for for as far as uh like the created uh story mode for your for your creative wrestler goes. I mean what what are you hoping? What do you uh, what are your hopes? See, I'm getting so excited I can't even talk. What are your <laughs> hopes for for the uh for like the my career as far as like your created wrestler goes? Well, I I've been saying this for a long time that that's one of the things that that's been they've been missing in the wrestling games as of late is that taking a creative wrestler and making a career out of it and see if you can make it all the way to the top. You know, that that to me mm-hmm. has been something that's been missing for a very long time. And uh, um, I don't think that's been going on since uh, Raw vs. SmackDown series. I think there's a couple yeah. editions of those games that you actually could do that, and then they just completely dropped it. And then the one, like... The kind of game that got me back into creating of creating somebody, putting them through career. Uh, the one the the game that actually got me back into that was the UFC games, and the UFC games did yeah. it really really well. Like the one that just came out, you know, I just did a whole career, and it was awesome because I could get, I could grow my character, I could add moves and everything, add you know kind of type, kinds of like submissions and strikes and everything. It was so much right. fun, and that's something I've missed from wrestling games. Uh, yeah. The other mode that I loved, and I will never shut up about this because I talked to you about this for like a long time. It was the. <laughs> you, let me. Let me. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess. Can I guess? Uh-huh. Yeah. Go ahead. Is it? Is it GM mode? Yes. Oh my god, GM mode is amazing. <laughs> oh, that'd be really cool. I mean, uh, you did. You. I remember you. You were just. You were all about GM mode. You were went. I remember all visiting you all the time in your jet yours in uh, Jesse's apartment and you'd be in the back, you know, in the, in the back room there, you know, <laughs> just doing your, doing your GM thing and, and whatnot on the, on the SmackDown series, a uh, Robert SmackDown series. And it was just like, man, it was like you, you, you did, was it 2007 that you 2006. did a lot of that stuff with? Yeah, 2006. It, was, okay. it was, yeah, Rob versus SmackDown 2006. I don't know, just something about that mode where you can, like you know, because that's what that's one of the things I liked about the draft. You could you know uh, when WWE had the draft, you know you could draft wrestlers and everything like that. And mm-hmm. I just had so much fun with that, you know. And you know there were certain wrestlers I would bury just because I couldn't stand them anymore, you know. And you know and <laughs> make make someone like Kaz Hayashi be like the champion or something, you know that kind of stuff. You know, like it didn't make sense, but I just enjoyed playing around with it and getting right. the concepts down leading up to wrestlemania that was such a great mode and i've been you know and i really really want to see that back in video games but you know that that's just me that i'm probably one of very very few that enjoyed that so you know honestly you're, you're really not i mean i've never really gotten into gm mode i just don't have the patience i guess for it um <laughs> but uh but i've seen like on a lot of forums there's a lot of people that want that gm mode in you know i mean if you go and you go to uh like the 2K uh, 2K forums, you'll see a lot of people that want GM mode uh, back in the, back in these games, you know. And I think it's a good idea. I mean, I think it's a good idea for them to put. I mean, we have these new systems now that that can take a lot of you know that can take a lot of junk, you know. So it's yeah. So I you know I think that it's a uh, more than they're more than capable of being able to add that stuff in there without taking anything else out. I would think. Um, I agree. I agree. I mean, but, GM uh, mode is in almost every other kind of sporting game. So to have it mm-hmm. not be in WWE, yes, they don't do the GMs more anymore. Yes, there's no split brand anymore. But that's still a favorite. I mean, you can do that in hockey games. You can do that in baseball games. You can do that in basketball games and football games. There's right. nothing that says you can't do that with WWE. They've done it, and it was successful. It was it was simple. It wasn't in-depth, but my God, it was so much fun from the point where you're signing people or trading people, uh, renegotiating the contracts. That was actually a lot more fun than people realize. It's just like, I don't know, just like, I have this roster for another six weeks. Maybe I should renegotiate this contract for another couple months. Oh, I don't have that much money. I'll renegotiate for another couple of weeks or something. That was so much fun. And, uh, 
Oh, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Well, well, you know, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, you know, for your sake and for all the other people that uh, that love GM mode, I'm hoping for theirs as well that they do put that in there. Um, I think that we're probably going to be in for a real treat with the with the my career mode in WWE 2K15, um, mainly because, you know, you like you said, you know, you've wanted to take that wrestler, you know, from, you know from like a tryout match all the way through NXT, try to build them all the way up the ladder and, and mm-hmm. you know, make them into a like a Hall of Famer someday. And I think that we could be in for a real treat because, I mean, if you take the what they've done with like the baseball, uh, my players and the NBA, uh, my player and, and all and everything like that is that's what you do. You know, you mm-hmm. go through like a draft class, you know, you you go through all that trying to work your way up, you know, into the majors or into the NBA. You know, that's what that's what those modes have been. So I'm, you know, I'm very optimistic of what they're going, of what the, my player and stuff for WWE 2K15 is going to be, you know? Uh, so yeah, I'm very, very optimistic. I'm excited. Uh, we should be having a nice little flow of information more, uh, coming out with it and within the coming weeks, you know, of, of the, for this game. And, and, uh, I am, I'm ecstatic. I can't wait. I really, really can. It's going to be, it's going to be awesome. So. I, I I agree, and and in closing, in closing for this project, for this uh, uh for for this topic, I want to say, if they come out with announcement that they're going to do a GM mode, they have my money, bam, immediate. <laughs> I am not taking any second guesses. I mean, Sting's great, <laughs> having my career is great, and everything. That's all fantastic. If they mention GM mode tomorrow, my money's on it. Bam, I'm good. Well. Well, I'll tell you what, buddy. I'm I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be glued to my laptop tomorrow um, with with because uh, I'm sure that they'll have that information out uh, fairly soon, and uh, and uh, so yeah, as soon as I find out if they if they announce that tomorrow, uh, while I'm glued to my laptop, uh, <laughs> fishing for information, then uh, then I, you will be the first person that I let know. Hey, GM mode is in or GM mode is out, but hopefully we'll have some good news. Great. I'm looking forward to it. And on that, let's take a quick pause because I got something to take care of. All right. I'll be take right back in a couple of minutes. Pause. Oh, Rec- recording again. All right. I resume recording. Okay. So next topic. Ooh, I'm a little. I'm a little out of breath. Okay. Uh, next topic. Um. You know, I gotta say, this year has been a huge change in the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? In the landscape of WWE. We've seen CM Punk leave. We've seen Santino Morella, you know, retire. And now we've seen Alberto Del Rio be fired. We actually got to say goodbye to another wrestler who recently retired. Uh, he's been a workhorse in the WWE for a very long time. That's not saying that he's been good. It's just that he's been a uh, constant presence. Uh, but Matt Bloom, otherwise known as, well, most recently was known as Tensai, uh, retired. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. He retired from uh, from in-ring action, and now he is basically, he's just announcing on NXT now, and he's, uh, he's doing something else. Uh, do you remember what it is? He's training. Some, he's training, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's basically helping these... Helping them train, that's right. Helping the NXT wrestlers and uh, train and everything. Um, or or is, is that right? Or is he training? At the, at the, perf- he's at training the performance, at the performance center. center. That's right, okay. Yeah. Man alive. It's been a long week. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Um, well, you know... <laughs> He's had you and a, I have never been a fan of his work, you know. <laughs> not really. You know, I've never been a fan of his work. You know, he's a, he like you said, he's been a workhorse. I mean, he's you know he had you know be, he was had a long run in WWE. Then he went to Japan and had a nice long run over there. Then he came back as Lord Tensai. Oh, everybody knew he was Albert. Everybody, mm-hmm. yep. but yet yeah, he was little Lord Tensai. Terrible gimmick. I don't know who came up with that. And uh, but he came back, you know, and had a nice little run um, as as Lord Tensai. Then that gimmick ran dry. And then he went to Sweet Tea with 
with Brodus Clay. Clay and the and the Funkadactyls and uh, tons of funk. That's what they were. Tons of yeah, tons of funk. It's terrible again. Um, <laughs> but you know, he's kind of found his. You know, he's kind of found like what he said was um, like just a dream of his. Now, you know, it was is to be able to you know train wrestlers and you know he gets to do his announcing on nxt you know so he's he's living his dream now which is good for him you know like i said i've never been Mm -hmm. a fan of his work you know i always you know i cannot think of one match of his and i was like oh man what did you see did you see that prince albert match man that was amazing (laughs) you know (laughs) but but you know i mean he's Apparently he's doing something right, you know, in WWE's eyes because he's still there. Brodus Clay's not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I mean, good for him. I, I, you know? I don't know what it was. You know, I, I still don't know what it was about him. I mean, he was around during the time when they were just trying to get big guys, big guys that were yeah. athletic, big guys that could do something and everything. And you know, and apparently he had a really good run in IWGP. You know, and uh, yeah, you know, over in Japan, he was doing really well. He actually had the tag team championship over in IWGP, and apparently his work was really good. But then when he came back, he was a little fatter than he was when he left, and mm-hmm. just people had a hard time working with him. So that's why his his uh, return was so unimpressive, and they ended up changing him to a uh, like a comedic gimmick. Like within eight months that he came back, and so yeah. I don't know. I I don't really know what exactly what it was that they they wanted from him or what they expected the fans to do. You know, <laughs> I really don't know. Right. But obviously, I mean, they couldn't give the fans anything because uh, usually, I mean, in his first run, you know, with all, all they wanted for him to do was shave his back. Um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't even chant that, you know, on his game because. Maybe he finally shaved his back. <laughs> so, um, so, I don't know. I mean, that's like I said. I don't. I I don't know what WWE saw in him as a wrestler. I mean, he may have a great, you know, he may have a great mind for the business and know know what he's doing. And, and obviously, he does. Otherwise, WWE wouldn't keep him around. You know. So no. But uh, but I mean, good, still good for him. Good for him on, you know, his retirement and what he's, and he retired on his own terms. You know, it wasn't an injury that made him retire. It wasn't age that made him, well, it might have been age, I don't know. But, uh, you know, but he retired on his own terms, you know, from, yes. from active wrestling. And and that's and good for him. Not a whole lot of wrestlers can do that nowadays. Like I said, Santino couldn't retire on his own terms. Uh, Edge couldn't retire on his own terms. You know, it was just uh you know, so so it's it's nice to see uh, nice to see a wrestler be able to go out, uh, go out in his own blaze of glory without having to uh, without having to succumb to an injury or you know or or anything else. So I mean, I'm I'm happy for him. I really. Am. Yeah, I'm. You know, and he's only 41. Um, and to to be honest, I mean, despite the fact that you and I never really saw much value in his ability to work. I mean, he still. I mean, he still had a career that most guys in WWE really can't say that they've had. You know, I mean, he was he was in some high profile feuds, some high profile stories with like Brock Lesnar and the Undertaker and everything. I mean, he right. worked with some really good people, and then he left. He left the big promotion to go to Japan. You know, he worked for both All Japan and New Japan Pro Wrestling. Mm-hmm. Not many people can say that. You know, especially in this generation, oh, yeah. you know, and he, he got some really good experience there. And for him to be able to go out with the top promotion and still continue to work with the top promotion. I mean, he's got a, he's had a pretty good career. I just, you know, I mean, like like you and I both said, it's just I'm not sure exactly what Matt Bloom had to offer. You know, the the one thing I remember still that I'll never forget was Brock Lesnar delivering an F5 to him and he landed on his head. Ugh. Don't remind me about that. That's yeah, just... so he he did the F5 and <laughs> basically turning into a uh, 
a Death Valley driver. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. <clears throat> so poor, poor Albert. <laughs> <laughs> so good for him, I guess. You know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, not you shabby mean, of a career, you know. <laughs> not a, no, not not a shabby career. I mean, it definitely was definitely wasn't, you know, a career to look back on and say, ah, oh, man, man, I, I my my career just completely sucked. You know, I mean, because <laughs> like you said, he had. A, you know, he had some high high profile feuds, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. for God's sakes, he was in a he was in a tag team called TNA. Um so <laughs> I mean there's that's high profile right there. Mm. But um mm. but no, I mean you know, in all honesty, you know, he was you know, um like I said, I, I don't I don't know what else to say about the guy. I mean <laughs> It's hard to it's hard to say some something about somebody that you know you didn't really care all that much about when, you know when they were uh, when they were wrestling, but he's you know like I said, good for him, and ho- hopefully he makes great trainer and uh, and hopefully his NXT you know announcing you know keeps taking off and and whatnot and he's keeps on having a great great little career there. So yay, happy for you. Yay. More Tensai. I guess in terms of talking about a guy that we didn't care much for, I, I think we I think we nailed it that, you know, we're still being fair, you know, so Yeah, I think we're still being fair. I mean we're not co- we're not completely bashing the guy's career. Uh because no, you know no. I mean, I don't know what his career was like over in you know, over in Japan, you know, because obviously I didn't follow him. So <laughs> <laughs> um, but obviously, you know, he did some great stuff over there for, you know, for them and, and whatnot. And I don't even know why we're continuing to talk about the guy. Why? I mean, we've said all there is, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well moving along now. <laughs> <laughs> moving along! <laughs> if you don't know what we're talking about, just check out Adam Sandler's <laughs> second comedy album, uh, sex or weightlifting, you'll yeah, you you'll get it from there. Um, Terrific. <laughs> I need to I need to listen to that now. Uh, I know. I don't know any any news other than any news that you want to talk about. I mean, the only other thing I have to really talk about really was uh, the surprisingly really good pedigree that Stephanie gave to. Brie Bella this past I was Monday. very surprised. I was like, holy, you know, I was like, good, oh, good job, Stephanie. All right. Wait a, <laughs> she, that was a surprisingly good pedigree. I was waiting for, I was waiting for one of them to do something before the other. You know, I was waiting for either <laughs> Brie to start selling it before Stephanie started delivering it. You know, <laughs> that's what I was waiting for. And that didn't happen. So, I mean, it nope. was, uh, so I was very, very impressed with that uh, that pedigree. She she waited a very, very long time to lock those arms, though. <laughs> I mean, it was very. Did she did she take some lessons on slowness from Randy Orton or something? Because I mean, good lord, it's like she hooked one arm. I figured she was just. And then I like, figured she was just giving late. us an eye. I... <laughs> <laughs> it took her like twenty seconds to hook both arms. You know, <laughs> and then she stood there for like another thirty seconds, <laughs> and then she delivered the pedigree. But I, you know, I'm probably, I'm obviously, you know, over exaggerating. You know how long it took, but but it it did seem like it took a, a little while for her to actually deliver deliver the pedigree. I mean, she's, I don't know. It was just funny. Well, I figured she was just giving us a really good look at Bree's butt. You know, <laughs> probably. I mean, I think that's all. That's the only explanation I have for it. But you know, I mean, um, I mean, you might as well. I mean, there's already been a, what Nikki's given us two nip, nip slips already. I mean, so I mean, I know, right? <laughs> I mean, so I mean, give us something, Bree. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness! But uh, um, other than other yeah. than the. Other than the video game stuff, dude, I mean, I really didn't have a whole lot of other stuff to talk about. I mean, I know SummerSlam's coming up uh, next, you know, next Sunday. Um, Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, but we've already kind of gone over the SummerSlam card and what we think uh, and what, 
you know, what we hope happens and everything. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, this could this this might be our shortest podcast yet. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I, I actually have a couple more other things to talk oh, about. Oh, do you? Uh, okay, all right. Um, You're going to surprise me with a couple things here. Here we go. I'm ready. Well, the... The main event at SummerSlam was represented by the way of a very professional-looking promo featuring Brock, uh, Paul Heyman, and John Cena that mm-hmm. really sold me on the on the on the main event just by their promos. Yeah. It was, uh, I mean, say like I've always said, say what you will about the guy, but John Cena can. He's great on the mic or whatever, you know, he knows how to, when he wants to, when he does, when he's not being silly and he wants to deliver a good, serious promo, he's still, he's one of the best in the business that can do that, you know, Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and Brock Lesnar, holy cow, I was surprised. What can I say? I mean, I was very surprised, (laughs) you know. You know, from what usually usually when he's saying something, you know, he's screeching really, really loud. Or, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, obviously Paul Heyman. I mean, good night. What can you say about Paul Heyman and and how he can deliver a promo? He's oh yeah, he's freaking. He's like he's the master at giving promos. It seems like because. Like everything that he says, you like you hang on every single word that he says, and uh, mm-hmm. and he's a heel manager, you know. I yeah. mean, and that's that's the greatest thing. Like he's a heel manager, and usually, usually the crowd will boo the crap out of any heel manager. It will not let them talk. People shut up for Paul Heyman because people want to mm-hmm. hear what he has to say. And when oh, you're a heel, well, ma- and when when you're heel manager, and you can silence the crowd like that with your words and how you're delivering them and what you're saying, good lord! I mean, you have it made right there. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I don't know if you know this. But I don't know if you know this, uh, but uh, um, Paul Heyman was actually a guest on uh, on uh, the MMA Hour with Ariel Hawani um, this past. Tuesday, I think. Monday or Tuesday. And he ended up staying for like over an hour just talking with Ariel about, you know, about everything from his relationship to Brock, to Brock Lesnar to uh, to uh, uh, WWE and everything. Like, just like very talking extensively. And I was, I, 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 I listened to it. I was very interested because the last time he mm-hmm. was on the MMA Hour, uh, it was 2010. And I loved that interview. And apparently yeah. a lot of the fans of the MMA Hour loved it too because... It's Paul Heyman out of character, but still being Paul Heyman. Yeah. And uh, he was talking about that promo. And uh, yeah, it was it was Monday. It was Monday when he was on because uh, Errol Hawani's like, well, don't you have to be, don't you have to be at Raw? And he's like, actually, no, we're very well represented. And so he told about the promos that they were going to show, which they did show. Mm-hmm. And um, they he said there was no vetting of Brock Lesnar. There was nothing. He did it all on his own. They, they, wow. there was no, there wasn't somebody who's like say this and then he'll say that no it was all Brock being Brock and that's that then that was very impressive because I really really liked the uh, the uh, uh, the promo and that kind of leads into what I was going to talk about next is just that uh, did you listen at all to Paul Heyman's uh, um, interview no I didn't listen to it um, I know I want for me I want to get his uh, uh, get his uh, DVD. Uh, that's what yes. I want to get. I'm very interested in, in that, and I more than likely will be picking that up very, very, very soon uh, because I really, really want to see. Um, I don't know like his whole storied career, and I so I would really like to, mm-hmm. really like to to see that and and kind of get to know, you know, where he came from, his roots, and 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 where and how he uh, got to where he is today. So, but no, I didn't, I didn't see, or I mean, I didn't hear that interview at all. I strongly suggest you listen to it because uh, um, it was very in depth. You know, he was very candid about how he was talking about a lot of the things, and you know, uh-huh. of course, of course, you know, he's also promoting the the DVD and Blu-ray coming out. 
you know, he, you know, he's promoting that and, you know, not telling everything because, you know, he wants people to watch the DVD and Blu-ray. And I got to say that interview uh, inspired me by what the things that he was saying that I actually want to get both the DVD and Blu-ray because apparently there are extras on the Blu-ray that are not on the DVD and there are extras on the DVD that are not on the Blu-ray. Well, and uh, <laughs> it's like, well, dang, gosh, dang it, you know, <laughs> And I just like, oh, fine, you know, I'll do it, you know, but, you know, you listen to the interview and you're going to want to. And because he, you know, he's he's a businessman at heart and he he really sold business. You know, he really convinced oh, yeah. me that I, I should. And it was a very good interview. I mean, he talked very candidly about his time away from WWE. And and if you're listening to this and you don't know what happened with Paul Heyman, um, he was actually working creative with WWE back in 2006 uh, he and Vince McMahon got into a face-to-face -face confrontation, and it resulted in him leaving WWE because Vince was just convinced that that Paul's idea wasn't good enough for him, so he yeah. just walked out. And um, lo and behold, they signed Brock Lesnar after he retires from w from uh, UFC, and an interview did not go well. And they said, oh, Brock, that's not where we wanted to take this. And Brock's like, well, then you should have made Paul Heyman an offer that he couldn't refuse. So, <laughs> five and a half years later, they're calling Paul Heyman. They make a deal for him to come back. And, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, he made his way back. And so it's one of those things. Uh, um, Paul Heyman has a long story career in WWE. It's I, I, I've always been a fan of his, and uh, it's just unusual for someone who is currently a heel manager to be getting a DVD devoted to him. Yeah, but, it's it's crazy. Yes. I mean, the only other person that I could think of that would ever get that for himself is Bobby Heenan. And, I mean, which he does. Yeah, and uh, that's, that's the thing. Like, Think about that. you got two people you know, who are heel managers, and they get their own DVDs and Blu-rays. You know, mm -hmm. it's like... Yep. It's like two of the best managers in the business, in the history of wrestling, who got their own DVDs and Blu-rays, heels. That's just that's just yeah. nuts. That's just nuts to me. You don't, man. It's just, but it's so cool is how the, how the business works, and it just goes to show just how good it is. You know, at what they do, you know, and. Man, I mean, like I said, I could go on about Bobby Brain, Bobby the Brain Heenan forever, because <laughs> he will, he will hands down still will always be my favorite uh, commentator and and uh, and manager. Uh, but man, uh, the work that Paul Heyman has been doing the past, I want to say the past couple of years, uh, especially this year, the work that he is doing and the promos that he is cutting are just top notch, and I've. And uh, like I've hardly heard anything better um, from anybody else. You know, he's mm -hmm. he's been the best so f right right now, and it's it's just awesome to see. Yeah, I mean, I know it's not a competition, but I will do you one better. I will say that Paul Heyman's work over the past twenty years have been spectacular. I mean, um, yeah, I wouldn't. I, would, I if he was. If, I mean, I won't argue with you because I. You know, like I said, you know, I I've known of him, you know, pretty much my entire life, but I never really followed him and what he did. But I mean, if he is, if he was as good then as he is now, you know, or even, or even like, you know, not even half as good as he is now, he, I, 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 I believe you. <laughs> I mean, that's all that all yeah. that's all there is to it. I believe, I, I'll, I believe you. Yeah, I mean, you and I, you know, we've been saying over and over again that Bobby Heenan is our favorite and, like, hands down the best manager and commentator. Um, I, I dare say that if they allow Brock to win the uh, WWE title at SummerSlam, I will say that Paul Heyman has surpassed Bobby Heenan as the best manager of all time. And the reason for that, if, it, if you, the reason for that is if you look at his history of the people that he's managed, the people that he's ushered, the people that he's worked with, I mean, it's second to none. He managed The Undertaker when he was uh, Mean Mark. He managed uh, 
ravishing Rick Rude. He managed Steve Austin. He's managed uh, he managed Art Anderson and Bobby Eaton. They were, they, that was the, I think that was the uh, Dangerous Alliance. Wow. And then he start he basically started and then ended up taking over ECW. And then think of the people that he's managed since being part of WWE. He managed Kurt Angle, The Big Show, Brock Lesnar, um, uh, Team Angle, the tag team of Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas. He managed yeah. uh, uh, CM Punk and now and now Brock Lesnar again. Just a murderous row of world champions, you know, like who d- who not only were world champions, but some of them defined the era that they were in. Steve Austin, mm-hmm. for one, you know, I mean, you're talking about Brock yeah. Lesnar, who really, really was the reason for how WWE got out of the Attitude Era. You know, I mean, you're going to have a hard time finding someone who was a NCAA champion, a UFC champion, and WWE champion. There's no one else that can claim that, you know, and, right. uh, you know, and CM Punk, you know, I mean, that that guy, if his tenure was longer and his reach was wider and his vision was just as wide as WWE's, he could have had an era of his own. So I think mm-hmm. if Brock Lesnar wins, it really puts a stamp on what Paul Heyman was able to do with Brock Lesnar, because let's call it what it is. Brock Lesnar by himself when he came back was not exactly as good as the investment that WWE was paying. When they brought no. in Paul Heyman, that's what sold it. That, I mean, and, you're right. I mean, I, I mean, I'll agree with you on that front because when uh, Brock Lesnar first came back, and you know, when he was on his own, you know, it really it didn't work. You know, it, you know, because something was missing you know it, and it was mm-hmm. that it was the mouthpiece you know yes. it was it was the mouthpiece you know for Brock Brock Lesnar that was missing and uh you know and obviously you know I'm not saying that his work was bad you know because I mean he could I mean he was still a little rusty you know obviously you know you're away from the ring for a amount of any amount of time you know due to whether it's injury or whether or not you went and traversed the universe and did some other things, you know, and then came back, you know, you're going to have ring rust. You're going to have, you know, you're not going to be at the, at the same level as you were when you left. Um, Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that if he would have came back with Paul Heyman, people would have probably looked past some of the, the, the ring rust that he had or, or, or looked past some of the, you know, stuff that just wasn't there for him on his, and when he did return, you know, mm-hmm. so, but, um, but I mean, I, like I said, I agree with you. You know, he just wasn't the same when he first returned, but when, when they put Paul Heyman with him again, that's, you know, it's just, that's a, that's a great team right there. You know, they just work yes. well together. You know, Brock, mm-hmm. Brock's the muscle, Paul Heyman's the mouthpiece. You know, Mm -hmm. Brock Lesnar doesn't really, in my opinion, Brock Lesnar doesn't have to say a word. You know, no, he's no, (laughs) (laughs) he's he's intimidating just by looking at him. Mm -hmm. You know, that's it. He doesn't have to say anything for me to be intimidated. You know, if I walked up, you know, and I saw him in person, and you know, he was looking down at me, I'd be like, "Yes, sir, Mister Lesnar, go on through." Whatever you want, Mister Lesnar, you know. But uh, you know, so he, in my opinion, he doesn't have to say anything. And no, you know, these taped promos are good. I don't mind mm-hmm. him saying something in these taped promos. But live, let Paul Heyman speak. Let him do all the work. Yeah, that, that's I mean, that's that, my opinion. That's how it worked the first time we saw Brock Lesnar. You know, mm-hmm. Paul Heyman brought him out. Started talking about the greatness of Brock. We hadn't seen him wrestle yet, but he was talking about the greatness of Brock Lesnar. Or he was comparing him to to Bruno San Martino and everything. Some of these greats. And my goodness, I mean, say what you will about Brock Lesnar, but everything that Paul Heyman was talking about in that first interview, that first promo, it's actually true. You know, we've yeah. never seen anything like Brock Lesnar. He is a he is a major draw for anyone he's working with. WWE. Uh, UFC, I'm telling you, he is a draw, and the reason is because there's no one else like him. And, no, uh, there really isn't. And and Paul is the perfect person to really show this guy off. And I think what makes their relationship work is that you can actually tell 
that they are really good friends outside of the ring. That there is real passion for each other. Yeah. I mean, there is. I mean, based on what you just, you know, said earlier, you know, you, what Brock said to WWE about Paul Heyman, you should have, you know, you should have, whatever, you know, with, with Paul Heyman, you should mm-hmm. have, you know, given him such and such or whatever, whatever, whatever it was. He was being yeah. supportive of Paul Heyman, you know, and, mm-hmm. you know, and you're right, though. You can tell they have they have that silent chemistry together. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like they, like they don't have to. You can tell that they have chemistry without them even like verbally talking to each other. And it's just, uh, it's just really, really cool. I really like that. You know, I love, you know, when he beat the streak and Paul Heyman slid into the ring and was just like, you know, had his hands on his, you know, face and was just like, mm-hmm. like he couldn't believe it and, and, you know. And then that just and like went over and just like you know just <laughs> hugged Brock and was like you did it you did it you did it you know yeah. and uh, screaming oh and my the, god oh my god like over yeah. and over again. Yeah, I mean, just... think about that moment. That's a huge WrestleMania moment. Oh, That's yeah. a moment where everything we knew was no longer. And think about it. It wasn't just Brock's moment. It wasn't just Undertaker's moment. It was also Paul's moment because. Yeah. He was the only one standing in the ring besides the referee, and the cameras were focused on Paul and his reaction, as well mm-hmm. as everyone else. Everyone else in, uh, what was it, uh, New Orleans? Everyone else, their, their reaction there at the arena. I mean, he was he was a centerpiece, too, and oh my gosh, that was amazing. Yeah, and that, you're right. I mean, it wasn't just, you know, it wasn't just Brock's moment or Undertaker's moment or even a moment for the fans, you know, uh, because, I mean... We didn't know what was going to happen, so it really wasn't our moment to begin with. But I mean, no. But like you said, it was Paul's. You know, it was his moment. It was his moment where I think, you know, for him and his career, that he, how, you know, he can he could manage champions, he could manage you know you know superstars. But what manager can say, I managed the guy that broke the streak. <laughs> Only yep. one person can say that. Only mm-hmm. one. And that that's, you know, and that's something, and I mean, that's something that Brock Lesnar can say too is, you know, there's been, there's been champions, you know, there's been numerous world, world champions, but only one person can, could have broken the Understaker's, Understaker, <laughs> Undertaker streak <laughs> and that was, and that was me, you mm-hmm. know, and that's, that's what a moment, you know, and, you know, and for, you know, for I could also say, and my friend who who brought me in was there right next to me when I did it. I mean, that's a great moment. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, and, it really was. So, but yeah, I don't really know what the original topic, you know, part of topic of this part of the podcast it was. I don't know if we went off on tangent or what, but oh no, no, this is all about like this is going from the promo to Paul Heyman's interview, so it's tied okay, together because gotcha. Paul was part of it, you know, gotcha. and. Well, one of the things that I uh, took away from uh, his interview with uh, um, uh, with Ariel Hawani, uh, he was talking about when Brock first came back, and uh, he said that uh, um, his, his he was showing his kids when Brock came in, and he's like, "Hey, hey, look at the TV! Brock's back in WWE!" And his kids were like, "Eh." He's like, "What do you mean, eh?" And they said to him, "They his kids, they're ten and twelve. They literally said to him." Aren't you supposed to be with him? Uh, yeah, it's you know, it's like, like he had been gone for like five and a half years, and his kids are telling him, "Hey, Uncle Brock is on TV. Why aren't you standing next to him?" Kind of a thing. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and he's and uh, another thing I remember him saying is that he just he was ready to say no, and the offer was good enough that he wa- walked out saying yes, and um, and yeah, it was, you know, I. I missed him, to be perfectly honest. I I, I missed him because uh, um, there's not many managers, in, you know, these days. And we're gonna have a no. we're gonna have another podcast talking about managers and like the lost art of manager, or at least a, exactly. a valet, yeah. if you will. And and Paul is the person to do that. And it does mm. take a special person to do it. Uh, and it's obvious that he can't manage everybody and make them a star. I, I, you want an example of that, Cesaro. It didn't work. 
No, you know, it, it just didn't. And I'm glad that they saw that it didn't work. Um, but mm-hmm. not only that, as I think Cesaro was just some bit, you know, I mean, Cesaro, I mean, didn't even re- need to get over. He was already over, you know. Yeah. Um, and so it just didn't make any sense to put him with Paul Heyman just because he was already so over with the crowd. Um, yeah. But, uh, but honestly, I think that Cesaro was just a placeholder for when Brock did come back again, you know. You know what I mean? I don't know if that was the the intent, but that's ended up that that's what it ended up looking like to the fans. Yeah. You know, because Brock just broke the streak. The next night, Cesaro's with the guy who managed the guy who broke the streak. How else mm-hmm. are you going to look at it? There was no time frame to separate Paul Heyman from breaking the streak to no. when Cesaro became his next charge. There was no time whatsoever. So, yeah, I, I don't know if that was the case, but it ended up being the case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true, and uh, I mean we're running we're running about an hour here, so I mean what? what oh, what, what you... um, um, the great Holly. Uh... Oh. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you really think I'm not going to mention him? <laughs> every every time we do this, I can only hope. <laughs> Only hope. Well, I, I think on that note, that's that that that'll bring us to a close. So, uh, thank you again for joining us. This has been a fantastic episode. Um, it has been uh, very fantastic. I agree. Yeah, as of the time that we're recording this, tomorrow is Raw, the last Raw before SummerSlam. So, um, yeah, we may we may be able to do another podcast before SummerSlam. If not, we will talk about the results of SummerSlam. We'll talk about what happened. Um, you know, whether Greg Holly made a good showing or not. We will talk about all that stuff. And um, so, um, thank you again for joining us. I am your host. I am Rue, and with me, as always, is my best friend. Oh yeah, this is Archie, and uh, I will slap you when I see you. So just, just <laughs> let you know. <laughs> I wouldn't expect anything less. So awesome. Yeah. So take care. We'll talk to you next time. All right. Bye. Bye.